what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the motherland experience it's your girl nye here and today i have a wonderful guest in store for you i'm going to be sitting down and chatting with the award-winning chiropractor mr dr brian cox the owner of spinal clinic ghana limited we're going to be chatting with him about his experience to ghana him being an entrepreneur here and among other things as well so sit back relax and let's get to it I am sitting here with an amazing chiropractor, an award-winning chiropractor, I may add. He has won so many different accolades, but it is including um, winning the Best Spinal Specialist Clinic in 2021 at the 10th Annual African Health CEO um, and Legends Awards. He won that, and he's won numerous different accolades as well. He's been on TV, so you've probably seen him a few times or two. So please help me welcome Dr. Brian Cox. Hi, Dr. Cox. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm Hi, <good>. TV land. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you doing? Oh, I am wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, it's an honor. It truly, truly is. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, have you? I oh. hope it's good. Mm, it is. Oh, wow. It is. Well, I promise. That's good. I I'm promise. Glad. So could you please share with us where you're from? I'm from Richmond, Virginia. I was born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. I went to uh, James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And then I got my chiropractic degree in Marietta, Georgia, close to Atlanta. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay, so Southern boy. I'm a uh, yeah, borderline Southern. So okay. because Virginia is like right right below right. the northern region. So yes, I'm a southern boy. Oh, I yes. love that, love that. So can you tell us how long have you been in Ghana? I've been in Ghana for 20 years. Wow, guys, 20, 20 years. years? Yes, 20 years. Oh my God. So I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm sure you Ghana. have. Yes. I'm sure you have. I mean, 20 years is a pretty long time to live somewhere. Yeah, 20 years is a long time to live. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you're the expert when it comes to Ghana, am I right? I, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but expert I know a little bit about mm -hmm. Ghana. Yes. Okay. I, I know, you know, I, I, I speak small, small, kakra, kakra, fewer, few, uh -huh. dee, 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 kid, kid, <laughs> amount of languages here mm -hmm. in Ghana. Okay. Yes. So you're like linguistics kind of? I don't know how to speak other languages, but mm -hmm. I know how, I know enough to make my patients laugh. Oh, well, that's yes, important. That's yes. important to like, you know, get them like, you know, comfortable, get uh -huh. them ready. So that's really important. So yes. could you please share with us what started your journey here to Ghana? Why Ghana? That's a good question. I had a few places I thought of going. I thought of going to Mexico. I thought of Dominican Republic. Mm. I thought of somewhere in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I thought of um, um, France. France? I, yes. Thought of somewhere in Africa. Okay. Um, you know, I just wanted to, I just wanted to look at other places to go to. Thought mm -hmm. of somewhere in Africa. Uh, of course, I thought of going to Virginia, back to back home, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, and doing chiropractic. But I knew a gentleman who was in Ghana, uh -huh. and I decided to help him build his practice here in Ghana. And so that's what really okay. brought me here. Mm -hmm. um, to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then I just decided to stay. I was with him for about two years, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to open up my own practice here. And then mm -hmm. another chiropractor, he's no longer living now, but there's mm -hmm. another chiropractor who said he wanted to partner with me. Uh, and I said, okay, let's do it. One thing led to another. God said, you need to be on your own. And mm -hmm. six months later, I opened up the spinal clinic where chiropractic is for life. Oh, I love that. The spinal <laughs> clinic, guys, where chiropractic is for life. Uh, oh, I love it. I love it. I love yes. it. So could you please tell us like one word that defines Ghana for you? Freedom. Oh, okay. Yeah, freedom. freedom. Yes. I, um, you know, although it was not, it's not as bad it wasn't as bad in America for me mm -hmm. as it was for a lot of people, but yes. I feel I feel like I'm free uh, yeah. here in Ghana. I can do what I want to do. I, I'm friendly with the police officers. Everybody's mm -hmm. uh, friends, but mm -hmm. you have to be careful as well, right. because they do have you know you have your good, your bad, and your ugly 
everywhere you go. True. So you can't, um, you, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, definitely yeah. share. Yeah, sometimes when I first, let me first start off by telling you okay. my experiences when I first came or before I even came to Ghana. Okay. Now, before I came to Ghana, I actually, um, I didn't know what to expect, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because when you think of Ghana or think of Africa yeah. in the States, you think of, you know, animals and right. people running around butt naked mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are the things yeah. that you think about when you think of Africa as a whole. Yeah. So for the first year before I came here, the year before I came here, mm -hmm. I did not know what to expect. So mm -hmm. I did not use air conditioning for a year. Okay. I did not use um, a car for mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. So okay. so when I got here, it was a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. It was like, I, I, in fact, I recommend everybody to do that mm -hmm. because sometimes people have false expectations because yes. now this is the end thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, to come to Ghana. Right, and, it's the fad now. Yeah, it's the yeah. fad now. Mm -hmm. So people are coming here and they're thinking that it's America. Mm -hmm. But it's not America. You don't have all the things you have in America. Yeah. Um, you, the lights may go out once in a while. <laughs> you, you yeah. Know, you know. But, be, <laughs> but because I've already mentally paired, prepared for the worst, mm -hmm. it became easy for me. So I was able oh. to stay in Ghana for 20 years. That was the first country I've ever gone to. Wow, really? Yeah. So Ghana was your first? Ghana was the first country I ever... ever um, going to. Wow. And I was only going to be here for a year or two and then go back home and practice. Oh. And then I said, people here have spines too. So why don't I <laughs> stay here? Wow. Well, God had other plans for you. What yes. other What other countries have you been to on the continent? Ah, I've been to well, Nigeria for the first time a couple of months ago. Been oh. to Togo. I've been to Benin. I've been mm. to Liberia. Liberia. The UN flew me there uh, to see the UN troops and give them adjustments and things like that. Okay. Um, I've been to Kenya. I've been mm. to South Africa. Um, those are the only places. I think those are the only places. Wow. Well, let yeah. me you say like the only places. You've been a yes. lot of places here on a the few, continent. A few. You yes. really have. Yeah, so yeah. with Ghana, what? makes Ghana stand out from the other places to you? Well, I think all of them have their own special taste. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I believe all the people from different countries are friendly. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't see anything extra special about Ghana per mm -hmm. se. Although I, I know we probably are supposed to say that Ghana is the most special place in the world since okay. we're <laughs> dealing with the Ghana. Mm -hmm. but, there are other countries throughout Africa that are beautiful as right. well. Um, South Africa was more like America to me. Mm. You know, South Africa yeah. was more like America to me. So I don't really count South Africa as Africa. Mm. I think of that as, I mean, it may be the area that I was at. I was in Durban. Mm -hmm. But um, South Africa is more like America to me as opposed to Africa. I look at Ghana as Africa. Right. I look at Togo as Africa. Um, one thing I did like about Togo and Benin is that it was cleaner than Ghana. Oh, really? It was cleaner. I've heard that about Togo. Yeah, it's yeah. cleaner than Ghana. And mm -hmm. that's the one thing I don't like about Accra. Not, yeah. not the rest it's of, really of Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's more so Accra. Uh, they need to work on their sanitation. It's yeah. not the best when it comes to that. But as far as uh, the rest of Ghana, it's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful. It's so lush. It makes you feel like I'm in Africa. You mm -hmm. know, it's more unspoiled. Exactly. The air is cleaner. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely beautiful. It really is. Exactly. But when you get to Accra, it's kind of more of like a concrete, you know, exactly. type of structure. So it, you really feel that. You feel a difference. Yes. You do. You feel it, a difference. You feel the difference when you're outside of, uh, of, of Accra. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I, I appreciate about Ghana as a whole is the people. The people are generally nice. Yeah. Um, you, now, you do have some people who are trying to get something from you, mm -hmm. but that's everywhere in the world. I think that's yeah. everywhere in the world. Yeah. So you just have to 
wherever you go, you need to be careful and be mindful that you're dealing with human beings. Exactly. I think that sometimes as we come here, we kind of let our guards down mm -hmm. a little bit because we're like, oh, you know, I'm in the motherland, turn up time, or we mm -hmm. know whatever the case may be. And sometimes people try mm -hmm. to take advantage of gun animals. Right. Sometimes people come here, they're thinking that, oh, these people, they don't know what they're doing, they, they, yeah. and they try to take advantage. And Ghana will show you that you cannot take advantage, you no. know, because you they'll smile in your face, but inside them, they may want, they, they're going to get you if you let them. Right. You know, you like know, you so said, you have to be very careful. Beings. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You have, you're dealing with human beings. So anywhere you go, you want to be, you know, vigilant, but also open yourself up to the wonderful people. There exactly. There. So can you please tell, um, share with us, what do you feel that Ghana has to offer you that America could not offer you? Well, that's a great question. One thing I notice here is that there's so much more opportunity because in America, in America, things are, are, have already been done. Right. Exactly. So here you can do things, you know, mm -hmm. businesses and start up businesses that you may not have been able to do right. in the States mm -hmm. uh, and, and do well. Mm -hmm. uh, the only the unfortunate thing is that if people here don't know the business, you have to kind of educate them mm -hmm. more on the business. Now, mm -hmm. even though there was a chiropractic business here in Ghana, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people still didn't know much about chiropractic. So in my beginning okay. stages, I was educating a lot of people mm -hmm. about the benefits of chiropractic and why you why you need to go to chiropractors. And mm -hmm. I used to walk around in villages and and um, um, markets with my spine. Mm -hmm. Walk with around your spine and, in and, your and lovely talk spine. to people about <laughs> the spine. Mm -hmm. In fact, the most I've seen in a week, no, in a day, mm -hmm. the most I've seen in a day is a uh, oh, no, this. The most I've seen in a day is 199. Wow, you're kidding. How yeah. can you service 199 pens? Do you have like four arms or like eight arms to like it's service all of them? <laughs> right? <laughs> Very quick. But um wow. but I saw 199, but I was seeing 120 a day at one time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I don't see that many people mm -hmm. a day now, but um, you know, I've, I'm, I'm older now, so I mm -hmm. need to relax. Oh, uh, um, you're still young. Well, thank you. Very yes, much. I, you're still I, young. I receive it. Mm -hmm. You receive it. You're I still young. It. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> you're yeah. still young. So, on the term or on the sense of your business, you've mm -hmm. been in um, existence since tw um, 2006, right? Well, the mm -hmm. spinal clinic, yes. Mm -hmm. I've been in Ghana since 2003. Wow. Yes. So you have like a lot of history. You yes. really, really do. You have a lot of history here. So could you please like share what have been like your high points, you know, your highlights of being here in Ghana as well as the biggest challenge you faced? The <laughs> highlights of my um, existence here in Ghana is getting patients better. I will oh. be honest with you. I, I would say that would be the, the highlight. I've seen people who couldn't walk who are now mm. walking. Um, wow, really? Yeah, I've seen. In fact, the oldest patient I've seen is 98. He's dead now. He's uh, he was the, he was 102 when he died. Oh, wow. But um, the, old, the, the oldest person was 98 years of age. Mm -hmm. I saw him for about two or three months. Mm -hmm. um, he was able to walk out. They carried him in. And I'll be honest wow. with you. I'll be honest with you. Okay. This particular guy, I was like. Uh, and this was like in 2006. It was in 2006. Mm -hmm. I looked at the people that brought this guy in. Mm -hmm. I said, y'all need to be taking him to Kolebu. <laughs> Kolebu is a hospital. Mm -hmm. I said, you don't need to be bringing this man in this office right. here because he doesn't need to die at the, at the spinal clinic. Wow, so he looked like he was that bad off. He was that bad off. Oh, my goodness. So I looked at him. I adjusted him. Mm -hmm. um, he got better. Uh, you know, he still wasn't able to walk, mm -hmm. but over time he was able to walk. And then one wow. day I didn't see him anymore. Okay. okay. So, um, he was, he was a Volterian, mm -hmm. uh, for, from the Volta region. So then I went to a funeral mm -hmm. a few years later, a couple of years later, mm -hmm. I went to a funeral and I saw his daughter. I saw his daughter and I said, Oh, I haven't seen you in a while. She said, Oh, he's doing fine. He's in the Volta region gardening. Gardening? Yes, oh he was gardening. Gosh. Gardening, guys. It was in 98? <laughs> yeah. Well, he was, it was close to 100 at that particular point. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So he was gardening. And then later I found out that he, you know, he died. 
you know, oh. a few years later. Well, he, he lived died. a full life. But he lived a full life. Mm-hmm. He definitely lived a full life. We were promised seven, 70 years. Mm-hmm. So he was lived exactly. over, you know, 30 years over. So Wow, yeah, that's so a blessing. I'm sure that was really rewarding for you to, yeah, you know, get especially um, a man like that that really couldn't walk. And now mm-hmm. he's gardening and everything. Exactly. So in your opinion, that's just stating like the healing power of chiropractic. Exactly. You know, how do you see it? Of course, physically it benefiting, but even oh, emotionally. Oh, let me interrupt you. Mm-hmm. I don't give myself the glory at all. Yes. It's God and yes. also them. The power that made the body heals the body. And that power mm-hmm. is within inside each and every one of us. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, a lot of us have not tapped into it. Because mm, that's deep. their bodies have been interfered with. The vertebrae mm-hmm. is putting pressure on the nerves that sends information to specific areas of the body. Mm-hmm. And it's not functioning at its optimal level. Wow. So what my job is, is to get you to function at your optimal level. Mm-hmm. And no matter if you believe in chiropractic or don't believe mm-hmm. in chiropractic, it works. Mm-hmm. It works. But at the same time, I don't do the healing. It's God that does the healing. Yes, he gets all the glory. And you, he does. And your body does the healing. <laughs> but well. I mean, but you're the vessel. You know, even bringing, vessel, but... you know, um, a person that one of the people bringing chiropractic to Ghana. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that that's incredible. And I think it's amazing. And just hearing you, because I've, you know, done some research on you. Oh, okay. I have. And it was kind of you explaining it. You have a passion for chiropractic, you know, you you talk about how you know our spine works, how mm-hmm. it interferes with our nerves, mm-hmm. and even our emotional state. Yes, I think that that's really really awesome. So, what started your passion getting into chiropractic? No, this is a, this is this is actually a <laughs> funny story here. Okay, uh, most people wouldn't think that this is how I started in chiropractic. Now, mm-hmm. I played I played American football. And I did go to chiropractors in the past, but I didn't know much about chiropractic. I, even though I went to chiropractic, he didn't really educate me on what chiropractic was and mm-hmm. so forth and so on. And I'll be honest with you, that particular chiropractor wasn't necessarily the best chiropractor okay. when it comes to adjusting me as well as um, um, educating me about what chiropractic services are. Mm-hmm. However, I was selling a computer to someone a computer? I was selling a computer okay. to someone and uh, he worked at Virginia Union University. Mm-hmm. And um, I saw that he was in a different fraternity. I'm in a fraternity, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Oh, and okay. he was in a rival fraternity, which is the Alpha. Mm-hmm. And he was an old man. He was about, uh, let's say, I say old, I'm getting to the age now. Oh. <laughs> but he, he's in his 60s or mm-hmm. 70s. Okay. Um, and I kind of just gave him a joke because he was in a rival fraternity, so Mm -hmm. I had to joke him a little bit. (laughs) And then he said, um, you know, what did you go to school for? I said, I went to school for kinesiology. I'm kinesiology. Mm -hmm. He said, kinesiology? Mm -hmm. And I said, that's the study of the movements of the body. He said, well, have you thought about going to chiropractic school? Mm -hmm. I said, no, I Mm -hmm. hadn't. I thought about being a doctor when I was a kid, but I never Mm -hmm. thought about going to chiropractic school. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to do research on what chiropractic was. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I started to realize that there are three types of chiropractors. There are medically based chiropractors, there are philosophical or principle based chiropractors, Mm -hmm. and then there are mixed chiropractors. Okay. So some people... Um, they don't understand that there are different types of chiropractors mm-hmm. and you want to to um, uh, associate yourself with the chiropractor that is best for you. Mm-hmm. Okay? That makes sense. So yeah. there's three different types of chiropractors. I find myself more of a mixer and mm-hmm. more of a principle-based or philosophically-based chiropractor. I, I, okay. I don't <laughs> put myself in the medical-based chiropractic. And mm-hmm. the reason why I don't do that is because... First of all, I don't prescribe medications. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. that medication should be the last option, last resort. Well, Mm -hmm. surgery should be the last resort. Mm -hmm. As you see, no drugs, no surgery, great results. See that, guys? (laughs) I like that. You like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, no drugs, no surgery, great results. Not saying that people don't need surgery, not Mm -hmm. saying that people don't need drugs, because there's been times where I've I've had surgery. Mm -hmm. There's been times where I've taken drugs. But in the United States alone, over 100,000 people die alone of properly prescribed medications. I believe that. 
and 2.1 million people have what we call atrogenic diseases. And what atrogenic diseases are, are diseases caused by the medications that we're putting into our bodies. So yeah. I want people to try to try natural avenues, eating yeah. healthier, exercising, mm -hmm. keeping a positive mental attitude, getting mm -hmm. the proper amount of rest. Mm -hmm. All those things along with the chiropractic care and making those lifestyle changes helps us to live a, a, a more fulfilling life. Uh, I love you saying that, Dr. Cox, because I believe you. I really mm -hmm. do. They say that, you know, medication, it brings on just more side effects. Exactly. It, maybe you'll be fine for this, but it all brings like three different more problems. Exactly. Because it's not the authentic thing. You know, the most high, the Lord has put everything here for us. Exactly. You know, on earth and different natural remedies. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually know of a person who had um, COVID mm -hmm. and she took a lot of COVID medication mm. and she ended up passing away a few months ago. Oh, sorry, and sorry, I really yeah. feel that that was because she was just, you know, her body was filled with all those toxins. She mm -hmm. didn't take the natural approach. So with exactly. you saying that, I think that that's awesome and I think that that's great. You know, you don't need medication all the time or mm -hmm. surgeries all the time. It depends on the severity. Most of the it. time. Yeah, exactly. Most of the time. Most of the time. Yes. You, don't need it. <laughs> you know, yes. so that's, I'm glad that you brought it to me. Now, I'm not telling you not to take your medication. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying that most of the time you don't need to take medications. You can make lifestyle changes and I guarantee you you will notice a change in the way your body feels. Mm, see, yes. coming from the doc himself, guys. Yes, coming, from <laughs> coming from the doc himself. Yeah. So what would you say would be any advice for people coming from the diaspora who are looking to set up a business? Because you have mm -hmm. a very prominent business here. You know, you've won different accolades. Mm -hmm. um, so people who are coming here, you know, that maybe you're a little apprehensive, even mm -hmm. business-wise and even personally, what advice would you give our brothers and sisters coming from the West? Well, one of the things I would recommend is um, do your research. Yeah. Don't just come, like I came on a limb, you know, mm -hmm. I, I came on a limb. <laughs> Um, don't do what I did and just come mm. here out of the blue. Mm. Um, make sure you, you, when you come here, come and visit, get, get an understanding of the environment that you're dealing with first. Mm. Um, understand the people because yeah. you cannot bring American, American culture here and yeah. disrespect the cu culture here yes. and think that you're going to have a thriving business because mm they will get you. Yeah. You know, like Nigeria, Nigeria, mm -hmm. they'll tell you straightforward, you know, they don't like certain things and they will get you. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll mm -hmm. say, right. this is how it is. And mean what they say and say what they mean. So they're, yeah. they're more like Americans. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. straightforward. Ghanians, on the other hand, they will smile. Yeah. And they will <laughs> get you in the long run. You don't even know that you've offended them. No. You may yeah. have not known that you offended mm -hmm. them, but you have offended them. Mm -hmm. And it might be 10 years later. <laughs> 10 years out of life. Get you. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So you just have to be very mindful. You have to be very careful mm -hmm. about how you deal with certain type of people. And not everyone is your friend. You know, mm -hmm. um, although most people here in Ghana mm -hmm. are, are good people, but there are some out here that are not. Mm -hmm. um, that, that aren't the best. They don't have your best interest. They are looking for their interest. And that interest yeah. is to um, maybe go to America. Mm -hmm. um, that interest may be to make more money. Mm -hmm. um, the interest, they, they have an interest. Everybody has an interest. Right, right. Um, but, and, and we all can work together to get that interest so we can mm -hmm. build together. Exactly. But some people, mm -hmm. they want more than that. They may take from you illegally. You know, yeah. the corruption. You yeah. have to be careful about the corruption. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't fall into um, that corruption aspect of things because mm -hmm. it, it can come back to hunt you in the long run. Mm. So I try to do yeah. everything proper. Exactly. You know? And above board, proper. you know, because I mean, the saying is, God don't bless mess. Exactly. Okay. So God you want to do, right? So you want to do things above board. And what you were mm -hmm. saying is very true. You know, yeah. it's good to understand the culture, the system. Mm -hmm. and I think sometimes when we come here, we feel like we can just hit it as mm -hmm. people being from the diaspora. But it's important to take a little while to learn, you know, and the things that you were saying, mm -hmm. very, very valuable information. Now, one thing I did do, mm -hmm. um, I, looking back at things, mm -hmm. I, I did that wasn't the best is yeah. that 
um, you know, sometimes people would do things that wasn't the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would yell, mm -hmm. you know, I would yell, I would say certain things mm -hmm. that wasn't necessarily the, you know, the best. And looking back at it, I probably could have handled it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. But because I had, was so high strong and mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted the best and blah, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. I wanted to do certain things. I see some people coming here and I see them doing some of the things that I may have done. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Some people would, they may yell. Mm -hmm. uh, some mm -hmm. people may <laughs> not know that they're uh, offending a person mm -hmm. by saying certain things, but the word may, the word yeah. they use may no, be an offensive word. Yeah. Like I said, why are you mad? Mm -hmm. Mad mm -hmm. means crazy here. Exactly. exactly. You know, where mad in the mm -hmm. States is angry. Angry, right. Yeah, you know, we take it as Mad in the States angry. is angry. Mm -hmm. So why are you mad? Mm -hmm. and, and the person will be like, I'm not mad. Right. You know, meaning I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't know that mad meant crazy. Exactly. <laughs> no, I actually, I feel you. Mm -hmm. I feel you so much, brother. I've been in a few situations myself because I think it's just where we come from, mm -hmm. where it's, you know, things may be misinterpreted, misinterpreted because we're thinking, okay, it's the one way, but actually here it's another. Mm -hmm. So really kind of even adjusting to the culture, exactly. it, it takes an adjustment. It's an adjustment period because we've been gone for so long, mm -hmm. you know, and it's now, you know, we're coming back. So we need to learn the ways of how things are done here. Okay, so I right. really appreciate you for going over that and just sharing your experience, Dr. Cox. Oh, I can no talk, problem. listen, I can talk to you for hours. I, well, I can talk, I can talk for hours. <laughs> I too. can talk to you for yeah. hours. It was amazing. So if anybody wants to get in touch with you, how could they get in touch with you? Well, they can get in contact with me. Um, it's called Spinal Clinic Limited. The number is 0244-837-317. Also, um, 246 one nine nine five zero three. So the name of the office is Spinal Clinic. You can reach me at um, all my social media handles at Spinal Clinic Limited, at Instagram, at Facebook, at SpinalClinicLimited.com. Oh, thank yes. you so much for thank sharing you for having information. Me. It was an honor. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure being It really here. was. And thank you guys for tuning in. And we will have all of his information in the description box for you. And please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this information with others. Until next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>